dinosaurs. They're huge, super cool, lightly terrifying, and are the first thing that got me interested in history and science as a kid. But how do they get those giant skeletons from the ground into our museums? We sent Science Sam to the Royal Ontario Museum to find out. Have you ever wondered how scientists turn this into this? Dinosaurs, the ultimate predators of the Mesozoic Age, roaming the Earth before the age of man. Paleontologists are dinosaur detectives, piecing together clues big and small to figure out the mystery of what was prowling the Earth in the age of dinosaurs. Today, I'm behind the scenes at the Royal Ontario Museum, and with the help of some friends, we're gonna uncover the mystery of what type of dinosaur this fossil belonged to over 66 million years ago. Like any good investigation, it starts with preparing our evidence. The dinosaur fossils come from the field in these protective casts, then they break them out of the cast carefully and clean them off, kind of like what your dentist does, but you know, on dinosaur bones. After months of carefully chiseling away all of that rock, you get a nice and clean specimen like this, which reveals the features and helps us get closer to figuring out what dinosaur this bone comes from. To help us out, we're gonna to talk to renowned paleontologist, Dr. David Evans, the ROMS dinosaur expert. Hey Sam, how are you doing? It's great to have hey, you here. Hey, it's great to be here. So you curate a lot of what we see in the public galleries when we go through the ROM. How do you go from something like this to those big, impressive displays that we see hovering over us? We're here in the permanent collections room and once the technicians sort of clean and stabilize the fossils, they come here. Mm -hmm. And this is where researchers from all over the world come to study the fossils. It's also where we select the specimens to go on display. It often involves, you know, basically metal work like blacksmithing, 3D scanning and printing or casting to build the freestanding mm -hmm. dinosaur skeletons that we're all used to seeing in dinosaur galleries. Now that our dinosaur bone is cleaned up, how do we start to figure out from these features we can now see what uh, type of dinosaur this might be? Sure, well maybe you can actually help me, Sam. So okay. here you're dealing with a uh, jaw bone, so can you see the tooth sockets maybe? Okay, so in here, that's probably where the teeth would, would have been. Yeah, what do you think the animal ate based on the shape of the teeth? I'm guessing since they're real pointy, it's probably not a plant eater, probably some type of carnivore. Yeah, that's right. So this is a meat-eating dinosaur um, that has serrations on the teeth. Hmm. And given the size uh, and the age, you know, the, this, is, this is the hallmark of a Tyrannosaur dinosaur, so a cousin of T-Rex. <laughs> This is just what we can tell from looking at the outside shape of the bone. Uh, but with technology, we can actually scan a bone like this with a CT scanner and start to reconstruct what the inside looks like. So I should send you over to Danielle, who's our research assistant and paleo artist, and she can show you how we reconstruct a dinosaur brain and how she goes about reconstructing what animals like this look like. Awesome, let's do it. We're getting close to figuring out what type of dinosaur our bone belonged to, which brings us to our last stop, the Imaging Lab, with the amazing scientific illustrator, Danielle Dufo. Danielle, as a paleo artist, you take these specimens, these bones, and you use modern technology like CT scans, and you put all that together to get us to these illustrations to see what the dinosaurs actually looked like, right? Yeah, so, you know, all of this all of the CT scanning, you know, and um, every little bit of information that we learn from these bones, it contributes to a bigger well of knowledge that uh, helps to paint a picture of how these animals lived. You know, learning about their brains it might not directly affect a portrait of any kind, but it still tells us a little bit more about how it was living in its ecosystem, how it was interacting with everything around them. And all of that is important data for the science behind all of this. So once we put all of that together, I think we can get a sense of what type of dinosaur this was from. I think we can. So this animal would have looked something like this. Cool. Ah, the Displetosaurus, an older cousin of the world's famous T-Rex. 
Although they were generally smaller, they had much larger skulls and longer muscular tails. Can kind of see the resemblance here. What would it look like actually on this image that you made? Yeah, so this is part of the upper jaw. Okay. So the maxilla of the dinosaur. And this would have been right up along here. Cool. Holding all of those teeth. Oh, this one even has a tooth in it. Mm -hmm. Two. <laughs> oh, what do you know? Piecing everything together, we now know that this fossil came from a Displetosaurus, a cousin of the T-Rex. Thanks for coming along, and I'll see you next time. That was so cool. Hey, Sam. Hey. How are you? I am so good. That was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. I know. I felt like you were like a kid in a candy store. I truly was. I would not have been able to seem as calm as you, though. I wanted to run around, but I was like, I can't break these fossils. No, you were holding, how old was it? 76 million years old. Just a cash, 76 Just, yeah. mil. I yeah. was very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we got a glimpse into what paleontologists do behind the scenes there, but going back even further, mm -hmm. what happens like once they actually find that fossil in the wild, how do they get it from the ground into the museum? All right, so they're hiking, uh, camping out for days. Like, yeah. These are gruesome trips, really, really long. And not only do they have the challenge of finding the bones, mm -hmm. they gotta bring them back without breaking them. Yes. And that brings us to our demo today. We're making a field jacket, which is the protective cast they put the fossils in mm -hmm. so they can hike them back okay. to the lab. So this is our fake excavation site. It's one, I, yeah. Honestly, this Very is the realistic. type. I like it. I don't have to look at all. It's there. Yeah, yeah. no hiking necessary. Yeah. We have some sand and we have our dinosaur bone. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you do if you discover this in the wild, in the Badlands, Mary, mm -hmm. you d dig like a uh, little moat all around it. Okay. Yeah, this is our pedestal. Mm -hmm. And then we start to build our field jacket with a protective layer using aluminum foil. So you can lay that down. They use aluminum foil in the field? Yes, actual regular aluminum foil, sometimes paper towel. Paleontologists aren't fancy. Yeah. If it works, they use it. I love it. Yeah, so nice and tight. That's going to protect our specimen. Okay. Now we get into the science meets arts and crafts. <laughs> we are going to use plaster strips here. Oh, okay. And I'm going to get you to just dip it. Um, get it, yeah, get it nice and wet. And then you're going to contour it nicely to our specimen. The important thing here, that when they do this in the field, they don't want any gaps. Okay. They don't want the bone inside to be jostling around in this cast. They Go want ahead. a nice, tight fit. Almost like when you buy, like, wine glasses or something. Exactly. Like, everything is protect them. built around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can do a few layers there. Okay. We're using plaster strips. At home, you can go classic paper mache mm. and do, like, newspaper, flower, water. Okay. In the field, they do plaster and burlap because it's nice and strong. Right on. And then once this were to dry, you would do all these layers that you need. Mm -hmm. um, now you have this nice cast, just like if you broke your arm. Yeah. Um, they'll dig it out with a chisel mm -hmm. from the bow, um, from the rock beneath, sorry. Yeah. And then flip it, plaster the bottom. Okay. And you get something that looks like this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now your bone is nice and protected, just like a cast. Yeah. And this is what you would put in your pack, hike back with to take it to the lab. But one last step, uh -huh. since you discovered it, Mary, you get to name it. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna call it the B Rex. B Rex, I love it. There you have it. That's it, it kind of worked. Like B for Berg. It makes sense, guys. Yeah, this yeah. is exactly what they do. That is so cool. This is honestly, I never knew that they had to like build something around it. Mm -hmm. Because you got to protect it. It's fragile. Millions of years old. Millions of years yeah. old. And then they bring it back and we get to see it in the museum. That's amazing, yeah. Sam. Great job. That was dynamite. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for more of the good stuff. <laughs>